Tear this out and put it in the Quran. Stick it in the Quran. You know what? Deceit. Christian missionaries, this is what they're doing to our people now. Deceiving them. This one here. He says, back of it, he said, the Lord's Prayer. He said, Lord's Prayer? We don't talk like that. The Lord's Prayer? He says, Al-Fatiha. We say Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen, opening chapter, the Lord's Prayer. So what's this? Abbana, Abba. Say, O oh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in Arabic. Calligraphy, deceitful. You see what you're doing? Deceiving the people. This one here is not Allah Muhammad. For a week I couldn't see it. Look at this. Everybody says Allah Muhammad. Am I right? What do you see? It's not Allah Muhammad. It's Allah Muhabbah. God is love. Deceiving people. I ask you, my brother missionary. You see, you're protesting. I said, look, is this your way of propagating your faith? If you have something good, something, why don't you go out openly and talk to them? Give them your calligraphy, your language. Why? What are you trying to catch fish with? What are you doing now? Deceiving people. And here, yeah, another one. Coming from Ghana, a letter addressed to the Arab countries. I must read it to you. I must read it to you. What they are trying to do now. They are sending parcels, literature, into Muslim countries. And on the top of it, they put rubber stamps. This is asking now, do you think that if I send you bigger parcels, about twice or thrice the size, size sizes I sent you with our franking stamp, which has the name Islamic Madrasatul, Islamic Madrasatul. I don't know what it really means. But as soon as the postman, the government man says, the Islamic Madrasatul inside. Your religion allows you to deceive people like that? In the guise of, you know, Jesus Christ truly described them. He says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. They're trying to deceive you. You must be beware of them. So, Brother, I'm not defending my Arab brothers. In Pakistan, you have the freedom there. Pakistan, your missionaries are making inroads. In Bangladesh, you have the freedom there. In India, you have the freedom there. See? In Indonesia, Malaysia, you have the freedom there. If some Arabs, you know, are more stringent in the regulations, but you're still getting through. Look, by deceit, by post, by radio, you're getting through. So what are you complaining about? What is your complaint? We have a legitimate complaint. Books that the Christians write. Every book. Inside, why I became a Christian. Sultan Muhammad Paul. When you flip the pages, verses from the Quran. For the Muslim, these verses are sacred, sacrosanct. Every child, every grown up will kiss it and put it next to the Quran. Why? Because Allah's kalam is, he will not tear it, he will not burn it. You know the psychology of the Muslim and you're taking unfair advantage of it. Look at this. From Sufism to Islam, John Abdul Subhan. Look at this. Deceit? Does your religion allow you to deceive people like this? Catching fish? No, you tell me. So what are you crying about? What are you complaining about? In Africa, you have 35,000 full-time crusaders. Billy Graham, I'm sorry, Jimmy Swaggart, he's boasting that he's getting through to 22 million Muslims through his radio service, 22 million. I'm asking, what are you crying about? Please, don't, you know, like, you know, bashful maidens, you know, when you do the things, you're hurting the people's feelings, you're trying to steal our children, and now, when somebody tries to do some type of protection, you're wailing like a woman. Please don't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the whole lecture will be available on a cassette tape, and it could be uh, available at the Islamic Center of Tucson, address 1627 East 1st Street, Tucson, Arizona, 85719, and the telephone number there is 325-8992. Repeat, the address is 1627 East 1st Street, Tucson, Arizona, and the zip code is 85719. And not only this lecture is available there, you could request several lectures of Mr. Didet and some other scholars also, if you want to broaden your background about this. Uh, also, we have about 15 more minutes for the questions and answers. You are kindly requested. If you have any question, please feel free and come to the mic. Now the gentleman on the right.
kind of stuff. First of all, I'd like to clarify a point. Um, earlier on tonight, you made a statement involving incarnation, involving a comparison of Christianity with Hinduism. Well, to, to clarify a point, we do not believe that the purpose of Jesus Christ coming down in the form of man was for the simple reason of understanding man's problems, but instead to take on the sin of the world. And because of that, there is no real parallel between an incarnation of comparing Hinduism faith with the faith of Christianity. And second, the point that I'd really like to address your entire issue tonight is that it seemed to me that it was more not necessarily who is Christ and what is his purpose, but it was more like an attack upon men, Christian men, your men. I mean, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate Muhammad and I appreciate all the great prophets, but it's God that is above all of us. And, you know, we really have no right to compare ourselves on the same standpoint. And so to bring in man versus man is really irrelevant when it comes to God and Christianity and the Muslim faith. And so I'd like to know not necessarily what you believe on the attack of a Jimmy Swaggart or a Pat Robertson or your own people, but instead I'd like to know where is it you stand on Jesus Christ in comparison to God and your Muslim faith in a comparison between faith, not men. I thought I made it abundantly clear with regards to what we accept Jesus to be. I said, and I repeat, that Jesus Christ, we believe, was one of the mightiest messengers of God. I said, we believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern day Christians don't believe today. We believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's permission and of healing bo those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. Then I said, there is a parting of the ways. And that is, you say that he's God, we say he's not God. You say, is God incarnate? We say, God does not incarnate. Is that an attack? Or is this putting forth to you our position? Say, look, this is our position. Instead of hypocritically telling you, you know, he performed many miracles and what he did and he spoke as a child and all that. And says, now I scratch your back and you scratch my back. Was that what I was trying to do? I said, look, we accept all these things. We are going together. Here is the parting of the ways. We say, he's not God, and he's not God incarnate, because God does not incarnate. And he's not the begotten son of God, because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex, and we are not to attribute such a quality to God. Now, this is the Muslim stand. If that goes against your grain, against your belief, now you have every right to ask, Mr. Didat, you see, Jesus is God. So what makes him God is he had no father. So some, every, every person must have a father. So I have to agree, yes. So Jesus must also have a father. So if you can't show a father, who is his father? I said, no, he has no father. He said, no, his father is God. What have you to say now? So he is the begotten son of God. He's God's only son. Talk like that. So what have you to say? We believe in the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You know, this is, this is what our book says now. Do you accept the Trinity? Talk like that. The first questioner, he did a beautiful job. He said, look now, we believe about Christ. Resurrection. So I said, look, if there's no death, there's no resurrection. Talk like that. Look, this is the question. So I said, now you want me to justify, even now, you want me to justify. I said, look, I'll show you from your own book that you read something and you misunderstand the thing that you're reading. Let's put it to the audience. Let us put it to you. But now you, I said, you're crying now like you're woman, you know, bashful maiden. You said, now look, you, said, you attack. What attack? What did I say disparaging about Jesus? You say that he called his mother woman in your book. I said, my book says, he says, wa bi walidati. He says, made me kind to my mother. Wa ja'alani jabbaran shakiya. And he's not made me, uh, oh, oh, oh. Wa jabbaran shakiya. And not, you know, uh, aggressive or uh, abusing. Look, this is the Quran is defending Jesus. 